How many apps do you have on your phone? Have you ever even counted? How many do you even use in a day? Do you know what a super app is? How many apps do you have on your phone? Approximately 45, I guess. Around 15. 5 to 6. 50 to 60. Around 50, definitely. Around 15 to 20. 15 to 20. More than 20. 20, 25, probably. Around uh, 30, 35. So, how many apps do you use per day? 5. Not more than 5. 10 to 11. 4 to 5. Less than... Five. Five to ten. One or two. Two or three max. Do you like apps which have multiple functionality within them? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I personally prefer apps which have one functionality each. Yeah, I prefer apps which has multiple functions. Yeah, definitely. Not really, not really. Yeah, I would definitely like some kind of apps that would have a lot of functionality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Makes it convenient for me. Our phones and therefore the apps on them are ubiquitous and integral to our interaction with the outside world today, whether that's in our work life, personal lives or even social lives. For most of the smartphone era, these apps have been divided and categorized by the function that they perform in our lives and most of the time we've seen single use case or at most dual use case apps. However, as these apps grow in importance in our lives and this ecosystem becomes the lifeblood for large companies, we're starting to see a reinterpretation of the ideal app experience for consumers through the emergence of super apps. All over the world, we've started to see this phenomenon emerge whether it's through WeChat in China or others like Gojek in Southeast Asia. Over the last three years, we've seen large Indian conglomerates such as Reliance, the Adani Group, ITC, and even Tata Sons step into or announce their intentions to make a super app. These companies are placing their bets on super apps as the ideal way to engage with their consumers and also to vertically integrate their wide array of products and services, physical or digital. Since Masters Union produces the future business and tech leaders of India and works with some of the largest players in the technology industry, we thought that this was a question worth exploring to assess assess the scope of the super app phenomenon in an Indian context. So in this case study, we're going to have a look at what super apps are, the origins of the first super app WeChat, and finally, what the highly competitive landscape for super apps in India looks like. So before we get into the logic of what super apps are, let's take a step back. The app drawer on your phone represents a snapshot of your life and at least what you choose to do with your time and attention, the precious commodities for which every single app competes. Recently, the idea of a super app has been gaining traction where almost all of the services that the user would seemingly use in a single day are bundled into one cohesive ecosystem. Before we go ahead, let's have a look at some salient points related to the unit economics of building an app in the first place. There is a cost to acquire each user for the app known as a cost per download. Some apps will naturally have a higher usage frequency than others depending on their functionality. And finally, some of the first movers in this industry have already developed vast ecosystems and often diversified their service offerings. Simply put, a super app is an app that has at least two high frequency use cases or functions. Let's have a look at the first ever super app, WeChat from China. WeChat is a video in itself to be honest with you. In China, WeChat is the no that connects people to the rest of the world. Whether it's ordering food at a restaurant, shopping, or even taking a loan, WeChat does it all. One of the most unique features of WeChat is that the commerce is done through mini apps that WeChat lets other third-party developers build on its platform. The volume of the commerce done through these third-party apps on WeChat was a staggering $240 billion in the last year alone, more than double the year before it. In terms of their business model, WeChat, compared to other social platforms that we've seen in the past, has been different because it's been decidedly slow to build up its ads business. Instead, WeChat opts to take a cut of all the transactions done through its platform and its payment service. So let's have a look at what made WeChat unique. Entry points. Some of the most important factors in making the proposition of a super app viable are an existing user base and a diverse range of products and services which WeChat had. The innovation of mini apps within the platform has been one of the defining innovations of WeChat. This allowed developers to create modules within their app to provide additional functionality, leveraging their their user base and engagement with consumers. WeChat has also leveraged the network effect, where the addition of users to the network enhances the quality of the service. The more mini apps and connected functionality that is available to users, the more the utility of the app in their life increases. So why has this super app model worked better in some parts of the world? The world over, the concept of super app seems to have done better in emerging markets as compared to more mature western markets where the concept isn't as popular yet. Well, the argument can be made that the access to first-time internet users in developing countries allows these companies to fight to be the first 
and hopefully only point of contact for these users, which can be a differentiator. Among the developing world, companies like Grab, Gojek and the SEA Group have done well in regions like Southeast Asia, where they are the biggest and best funded super app competitors. Indonesia-based Gojek, for example, which started out as a motorcycle ride-hailing platform, has now also ventured into other things such as payments and food deliveries. For example, the co-chief executive of Gojek argued that this region could be a natural fit for the concept of super apps because for a lot of people, this region is unique in that the first experience that people have had with apps or the internet, in fact, has been through mobile. Given what we know about super apps and the diverse spaces that they occupy, there are a number of players for whom it would be advantageous to have a super app, each for their own reasons. So let's have a look at the various players looking to become the dominant super app in the Indian market and do a small SWOT analysis of each of these players as well. The first category here is social media apps. A tectonic shift in how the ad-supported app economy works is also driving the emergence of these super apps where user data in itself has become a commodity and has value. For example, an interesting bit of information information to come out of all the chaos related to Elon Musk and his failed Twitter bid was that he wanted to make Twitter the WeChat of the Western world. We spoke about a network effect previously and this is something that social media companies will see as an advantage when looking to enter the race to become a super app themselves. The Indian entrant here would be WhatsApp. WhatsApp is looking to expand its footprint in India as well. In 2020, they announced that over the next five years, with the help of domestic service providers, they would carry out initial projects in the areas of small business loans, pensions and even insurance. They are also working on allowing small and micro finance institutions to sanction loans from within the app. In 2021, WhatsApp also launched different pilots in the finance space, allowing consumers to buy health insurance from SBI and also to sign up for micro pensions from the National Pension Scheme. A strength for WhatsApp in the super app race is the sheer size and scale of their user base in India and the high frequency of use of the app. However, in contrast, a weakness would be that WhatsApp's core product, which is chat, is tied to the brand in the mind of consumers. An opportunity opportunity here would be the possibility to combine this huge user base with the thriving UPI ecosystem in India. In fact, WhatsApp has actually recently grown its own UPI payment base as well as the transaction volume of payments done through the app. However, a threat here would also be combining all these different elements into the core chat functionality as well as the large and in fact almost dominant market share of other players such as Google Pay and Phone Pay when it comes to the UPI space. The next category of companies trying to break into the super app space are e-commerce companies. One only has to look at Amazon to see the vast range of products and services that e-commerce companies are able to offer their consumers. Flipkart, which is actually part owned by Walmart, is making a play in the Indian super app space through its subsidiary, PhonePay. Based on their incredible success in the payment space, PhonePay is now looking to expand into other verticals involving money and finance. PhonePay's major strength in its bid to become a super app is the high use frequency of its primary function, which is bill payments. According to data from NPC, PCI, PhonePay had a 47% market share of all UPI transactions in April 2022. Further, PhonePay also has a stake in a company called IndusOS, whose primary offering is a vernacular language app store that has over 100 million users in tier 2, tier 3 cities and more. A weakness here could be that the parent company, Flipkart, has large distinct brands in various other categories as well. A major opportunity here could be the possibility of making vast inroads in all the non-metro and non-urban markets in India. A threat here, however, could be the presence of various larger and more cohesive ecosystems from their competitors and also the fact that PhonePay will be looking to compete against these other companies while also trying to make a profit for the first time. Similar to PhonePay, the next category of companies looking to make inroads in the super app market are fintech companies. The dominant Indian entrant here would be Paytm that has actually been gravitating towards making a super app for a while. However, recently Paytm has started to follow in the footsteps of WeChat by announcing their mini app store, they plan to create two to 3,000 distinct mini apps through this process that they will make available to consumers. A strength here for Paytm would be their large user base and also their transaction volume. In fact, Paytm is the market leader in India when it comes to their market share in the P2M or person to merchant space. Paytm actually boasts a merchant base of 22 million, which increased to 23 million in the last year. However, a major weakness here is the change in perception from investors ever since Paytm 
PM has been listed on public markets. In fact, the Indian Express reports that of the 18,000 crore rupees raised from Paytm's IPO, nearly half of it went to investors who chose to sell their stake at that time. An obvious opportunity for Paytm here would be that they are uniquely placed through their introduction of mini apps on their platforms, which will greatly increase the functionality. Another threat here for Paytm is the fact that non-revenue generating UPI actually constitutes more than half of their GMV or gross merchandise value. This means that customers gravitate towards Paytm through UPI, which is not a revenue generating vertical for them. The final entrant in the super app space is undoubtedly large Indian conglomerates. We have seen many like Reliance and Adani also making plays in this space, but one of the more unique entrants is in fact Tata New. Tata Sons is one of India's largest conglomerates and has a very diverse range of products and services under their umbrella. This includes retail businesses such as 1MG, Tata Click, and also large industrial businesses such as Tata Steel. By combining all these goods and services into one app, the Tata Group is also looking to create some sort of loyalty program with the introduction of new coins within the Tata New app to redeem rewards for consumers. Tata New was launched with huge fanfare and a really large advertising campaign that began with this year's IPL. However, things may not be going as well as you think for the Tata Sun Super app. The strength for Tata New is undoubtedly the huge variety of goods and services contained within its app, which allow for a diverse range of functions from booking flights to ordering groceries. Further, given the companies in their portfolio, they could also create an experience similar to mini apps with the integration of brands such as 1MG and Big Basket into Tata New. The major weakness here, however, is that compared to all the other apps which started with a primary function and then evolved to add different services on their way to becoming super apps, Tata New has tried to launch as a full-fledged super app from the get-go. One of the major opportunities here for Tata New could be the boosting of business for the subsidiary companies in the Tata Group. The threat here for Tata New would be the onboarding of customers to a completely new app and ecosystem along with the challenges associated with keeping user retention high over the long term after the initial campaign had died down. So who is the best place to make it? I think Tata or Jio. Maybe Amazon. Paytm. So knowing the use case of Paytm and I use it personally a lot so Paytm would be it. I think Paytm is trying to compete in that market. Huh. I think Meta. It would be Google mostly. I think Cred would. Potential super apps is one is Cred. So I don't think anybody would win the super app because it's very, it seems to, at least to me, it seems very cluttered. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below and the top 5 comments with the most likes in the next 24 hours will receive an Amazon gift card worth 1000 rupees. Do remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to the Masters Union YouTube channel.